The Big Goodbye. Captain Picard and some of his crew are caught in a deadly trap on the holodeck as the results of a shipwide scan from an alien race. The episode starts with them talking about the insectoid race, which of course we never see in the episode. They have to do a rote greeting in order for any kind of agreement to happen between them, and they have to say everything exactly right, and Picard is stressed because apparently it's really difficult to get everything right. The double bars indicate an elongated S sound. And the inverted T means to hold the Z. Unless? <sighs> Unless it's followed by three wavy lines, in which case the Z becomes a B. The weird greeting he has to do is the bookend of this episode. They open with it, and at the very end, they close with the two when he actually gives it. The fact that that's how the episode starts, it really feels like that's going to be the A plot, and it's definitely what should be most important in the episode. They pretty much just forget all about it. Picard's like, I'm gonna go play in this video game for the rest of the episode. He's in 1940s San Francisco. He's a private detective, and he's read these stories since he was a kid, and he says, Dixon Hill has been a hero for me since childhood. I assume he's read all of the stories. So why doesn't he understand more of what the hell is going on? He's not a stupid guy, and if he's read all the stories, he should understand a lot more than he seems to. It's definitely something that if he's a big fan of those things, he's going to be more familiar with it than he seems to be. I could see the other characters acting aloof, and they do. They bring along Waylon, who was an expert in that time period, and you know immediately when he shows up, something's going to happen to him because he's not a main character, but they give him a name and he talks a lot and he ends up getting shot. Being an expert, he doesn't really say or do anything the entire time that he's there relating to his reason for being there. Picard acts like an idiot when he goes in the first time. He doesn't understand why everyone's treating him like he doesn't belong, but he's wearing his Starfleet uniform. Every time someone speaks to him in the language of the time, he's like, what are you talking about? He seems to forget sometimes and remember other times that he's in a holodeck. It made me think a lot of the way VR is kind of catching on now and imagining, you know, having a parent put on a headset and then saying you're in the world now and they forget that they're playing a video game. It's not something that would actually happen in real life, no matter how realistic it is. The car doesn't know what Halloween is. At least you're ready for Halloween. Halloween? Yeah, well, they've outlawed all religion of any kind in the future. And candy. Somehow, when he has the conference, when they're initially going to talk about the Harada, he still has lipstick on his face. Oh yeah, that's a good point. That raises some questions. It is an early holodeck episode, so some of the ground rules have not been solidified yet, so I'll let it slide. When they're in the 40s world and they're talking to the newspaper guy, he's played by Dick Miller, which is awesome. The Terminator, he started with Roger Corman way back when, and he's also in Gremlins. <laughs> Picard smoking is pretty funny. Beverly eating a piece of gum like an idiot. Well, that also raises questions about the holodeck. Does it make them feel that they're doing it, or are they actually ingesting something? And does it disappear when they leave the holodeck? What if they go to the bathroom, and then it gets turned off? Is a puddle of piss just gonna splash down on the ground? Are Riker's fluids all over the holodeck? <laughs> I'd hate to be that crewman. It sounds cool. You have holodeck duty. All right, yeah. But really, it's cleaning up after everybody that was in there. The conflict in this episode is the Harada probe the Enterprise from long range, and the energy causes the holodeck to malfunction. This is the first of many episodes where the holodeck malfunctions. Something goes wrong, and they're all in danger. After they get probed and the holodeck malfunctions, the safety protocols are off. They're trapped in there. They can't get out. And Jordy's going to look at it, and Wesley says, I've studied all the technical manuals on the holodeck, sir. I think I can be of some help down there. And of course, they say no. He's proven his intelligence so many times over. There's no reason to not let him pitch in. So then they let him go anyway. So Wesley figures out what's wrong, and Riker's like, okay, I need you to fix it. And Wesley says, I gotta be careful. If this isn't done correctly, the program could abort, and everyone inside could vanish. Yeah, that makes no sense. Wayland gets shot, so the urgency is way higher for them to get off. And the Harada are trying to contact them to get Picard to do his weird insect greeting. So the villain of the Dixon Hill story becomes a real threat because the safety protocols are off and he's going to kill them unless he gets the item, as they keep saying it. Which I think is a reference to probably the Maltese Falcon, but I'm no expert on that kind of film noir type stuff. Luckily, I am. Picard gets pistol whipped at one point, and it makes the most over-exaggerated Neo Geo sound effect. 
they try and explain to the holodeck characters that they're on a holodeck and what a computer is and how the enterprise is going through space it's not enough of a focus in the episode to really give it the time that it needs the holograms actually walk off the holodeck for a solid 30 seconds and are standing in the corridor before they dematerialize what is manifesting them when they're out there there's still some things that they should have thought about a little bit better the final scene is picard going back to the bridge and talking to the harada and doing the insect greeting which is awesome at the end, everybody's laughing about everything that happened. And meanwhile, Waylon, he's over in sickbay, still possibly dying. He's not a main character. Who gives a shit about him? The big goodbye. What rating would you give it? I would give it a B minus. It has a lot of interesting ideas and a lot of interesting character interactions with some characters that aren't even real. And exploring the holodeck is a good idea to devote a whole episode to it. But what should be the A plot is the insectoid race that gets forgotten. I would agree with the B minus. 